Unlike Anam Allfather, our story does not begin at the dawn of time. It begins right now. Fellow adventurers, are you ready? To discover a larger world. Much, much larger. Make the All Father Anam hear you! That's what we absolutely love to hear. Uh, hello, everybody. I'll be your dungeon master for this evening, Brendan Lee Mulligan. Thank you so much for coming out. Without further ado, we're going to bring out our incredible band of heroes, your adventurers and player characters for this evening. Let's start with Gabe Hicks. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. That's one giant cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, welcome to a giant sized adventure, uh, semicolon, uh, larger than live, semicolon, uh, the sky, semicolon, there are giants in them. <laughs> Uh, we are here. Oh, we're going to thank a couple people up at the top of the show. We want to say thank you to Game Theory for this amazing table. <laughs> Holy smokes. We want to say thank you to Wiz Kids for these amazing miniatures. Uh, we are so excited to bring you. Oh, is that me? <laughs> 
how fitting, uh, a giant version of a game about giants. Bigby presents Glory of the Giants. In early access now and out everywhere, August 15th. Uh, for those of you who want to follow along with the action, all of our incredible heroes, uh, some of whom have features that you will see for the very first time, uh, those are available uh, in the chat. The links for those character sheets tonight are in your program, so you can follow along and look at the character sheets and go, now what would I would have uh, done? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, keep those thoughts to yourselves. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, we also uh, want to say a big shout out and a thanks to Natalie for the sick friendship bracelets. Thank you, Natalie. Oh, that's Woo! great. You're my comfort people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, 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 every day. Oh. And, and, and I'm sorry for that. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, and for this next part, also, uh, we, uh, tonight's game and the book that inspired it are dedicated to Kim Mohan. Uh, Kim Mohan edited more D&D books and mentored more D&D writers than anyone in memory. His kindness and wit are woven into decades of the game, and he will influence its writers and editors for decades to come. This book is dedicated to his beloved memory. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and what I would love for us to do, because <laughs> let me tell you, once this adventure pops off, it's not slowing down. Um, so I'd like to actually go down and have everybody briefly introduce their character and just give us a visual description before we dive right in. Gabe, we'll start with you. My name is Jackson. I am a Goliath, small to some, but large to others. I have a soft blue tone to my skin, and a bit uncharacteristic, there are some aspects of hair across the top of my head and the bottom of my chin. On my back is a large blade, as well as usually the responsibilities of my companions. <laughs> but I stand tall and ready to defend any of them to the end of my life. Uh, Luis. Yes. Uh, hi, everybody. I am Ellis Longfall, a halfling. Uh, and I'm about three feet tall, but although we come from a village of halflings where most of the halflings are a little bit above the average height, uh, I am a ranger fighter. Um, and uh, I'm traveling alongside uh, someone who's very close to me. I am Min Fakul Longfall. Uh, this is my twin, and we both uh, have dark hair, and I am a little under three feet high, um, but I make up for it uh, with my, uh, all of the things that I carry with me. I love to make things out of giant's relics that we have found. Uh, and uh, we look pretty similar, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. pretty, much, pretty much the same. We're obviously twins. Yes. <laughs> Twin. Uh, Dale. Uh, hey, hi, how's it going? Uh, I'm going to be playing Snorri S. Tolinson, uh, for whom he, he's a cleric and he's got kind of uh, sun bleached blonde hair. Definitely too long. You might call him a, a long-head yahoo, really. Um, way too tanned, kind of leathery skin. Uh, and, you know, to him, yeah, like, peace is cool, life is cool, but knowledge is like, pfft, you know. Uh, Jeremy. A voice has told me that I should describe myself. <laughs> I often speak to the stars in the hope that perhaps the gods beyond will hear me. I have a long beard, as you must be able to see, since you are all around, sparkling above me. I have followed the ways of the druid and harnessed the power of the stars. I awoke one day in a starlit forest vale and did not remember my life before that point. I have made it my quest to discover who am I, and I have wielded the power of regeneration, most recently upon a wizard named Bigby. 
his friend, Morden Canaan, came to me and said, my companion is dead. And so calling on the powers of nature, I laid my hands upon this human and he was reborn a gnome. Now, he seemed quite put out by it. <laughs> Well, I always thought it would be quite delightful to be a gnome. <laughs> Having met our heroes, I invite you all to envision endless skies, clouds streak, tall as mountains across endless blue, the wide world below rendered in miniature long roads and winding rivers, the towns, nay, cities of the small folk, rendered smaller than grains of sand from the vantage of those who live atop the world. The worlds, it is said, were rendered and fixed in their orbit of the prime material plane by Anam Allfather, king and first of the gods of the giants. Long striding and wide handed were these the first of the great giants. <laughs> and yet, unlike Anam Allfather, our story does not begin at the dawn of time. It begins right now, twing, a crossbow bolt, longer than a wagon cart, cascades down a hallway, boom, shatter of stone, as a giant voice bellows from chambers beyond, small folk, small folk sighted in the castle, drive them to the ground, catch them, grind them, crush them. Another voice calls out, fee, fa, and the voice says, not that, don't do that. <laughs> That's trite. Just find the small folk and destroy them. We cut to the shadows of a corridor in a massive castle. This servant's hallway has a ceiling some 35 feet in the air. This would be the grand chamber of a cathedral on the ground, and instead is a cobweb-strewn side passage in the massive hallways of Castle Hallowstar, built on a cloud that now hovers some two or three miles aloft in the sky. But we are not concerned with clouds, we are concerned with the huddled group of medium and small-sized humanoids who have gotten themselves in a pretty big pickle. Uh, uh, friends, you huddle together and hear that you have now been spotted. The giants of the castle know that you are present. What are you going to do? Dudes, I think it's time that we get out of here. Get I'm going to throw the three Carnelian Triceratops figurines at the ground as hard as I can. Taking aloft a piece of giant magic, our rune carver, our seeker of the lost lore of giants, Snorri, throws three prehistoric figurines of wondrous power on the ground and three Carnelian Triceratops. <laughs> uh, a bunch of dinosaurs pop out. Uh, these three enormous triceratops uh, in the span of the castle you now see look more, more or less sort of dog-sized in the vastness of the castle. These bright sort of ruby red triceratops and you begin to hear thunderous footsteps and you hear a loud whistle and a clapping of giant hands saying, dogs after them! Uh, and I'm going to need uh, somebody here to make an animal handling check as these three oh. triceratops spring into being. Go ahead, Tiny. Uh, okay. Uh, it's, me, it's, me, it's me, it's me, it's um, me, it's me. All right, uh, are these really, these, these triceratops? Oh, are they? They're incredible. Okay, uh, uh, okay, buddies. Um, uh, all right, uh, let, let's, let's calm them down. Yes, 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 just, just stay right there. Majestic, uh, aren't they? Oh, well, <laughs> that will be a nine. A nine. Uh, you approach the Triceratops. Thankfully, they are friendly to you right away. As you approach to get them to kneel, you are furiously licked by curious and friendly. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, rounding the corner, you hear. 
the dogs that now descend on you no. that you can see have clearly been lovingly brushed, primped, and powdered, and handled by loving giants, a pack of eight dire wolves comes <laughs> charging around the corner as the pets of these cloud giants see what looks like snack-sized creatures hanging out in the shadows oh. of the castle. We gotta go, we gotta go! Um, uh, can, you, can you have them, I don't know, at least cover us or something? I, I can't control these triceratops. They, I think they're too in love what, with me, I don't know. Can you really control a triceratops? Uh, uh, hey buddy, uh, I, I love that your saliva is all over me, but can you um, at least run some cover for us? Uh, sick them! I'm going to try to sick them against the dogs that are coming. You're going to take the Triceratops and say, attack the dog? Yeah, then we can run! Uh, uh, okay, give me one more uh, animal handling with disadvantage, if you'd be oh, so no. kind. That's a hard pitch, folks. Uh, uh, that is an 18. Okay! Okay! You see these dinosaurs, these sort of ancient creatures summoned by these giant rune carvings on these beautiful figurines. Um, the dinosaurs all sort of turn to each other, confer briefly in a kind of primal saurian understanding, and instead all kneel and kind of, in, without non-verbally are like, let's go back to the first plan. Um, and they all <laughs> dip down and get on their back so that you can ride them. I'm climbing on this triceratops then. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, hop on, hop uh, yeah. on. Yes, I, I, I think they want us to ride them, my friend. <laughs> yes, well, I mean, yes, I, 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 it became clear to me when, uh, uh, yes, you're right. <laughs> uh, okay, That's right. all of you jump on these triceratops, and I'm going to need you to roll initiative. Oh, Ooh. no. <sighs> now, now, my friend Snorri. Yes. Oh, I nice. desperately need to get my prescription improved, so you better steer the triceratops. <laughs> That bodes well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amazing. Um, let's go ahead. Uh, what do we roll for initiative for Jackson? 21. Ooh, hell yeah. Uh, what did we roll for Ellis? 24. Okay. <laughs> uh, 24 for Ellis. What do we roll for uh, Min? Uh, another 21. Uh, ooh, wow, very, very good. Thought I did well. Uh, what do we roll for Snorri? Uh, just an itty bitty 17. 17, incredibly respectful. Uh, and uh, for Cornelius? 18. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 Okay. Uh, uh, unbelievable. <laughs> you guys had to jump on this. You guys knew what was coming. Um, uh, and that is a natural one for our dire wolves. <laughs> You guys see these dire wolves have been a couple generations of pets. Their snouts There's have gotten... There's one that's like real, real Their snouts, snouts are like way shorter. They're way fluffier. Oh they, <laughs> some of them look like they might have some like hip issues or their breathing is a little ragged. Real heavy. It's like these sort of domesticated dire wolves. Um, <laughs> uh, Hilarious. Uh, Ellis, you are going to be first to act. The Triceratops, on your initiative, all three take off, Ooh. galloping down the hallway, and you surge forward into a chamber. There is a wide open colonnade, massive, beautiful peach columns that rise taller than you've seen any halfling building in your life. Taller than a four or five story building, these columns rise up into the grand hallway and you see decorated, gilded suits of armor rising 20 feet into the air. The pole arms in their side, some 25 or 28 feet high and a massive door opening out into the sunlit courtyard beyond. Um, what do you do as your first action? There's about eight dire wolves, maybe about 40 feet behind you. Oh, 40 Okay. Um, wow. Uh, well, I am going to. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm, okay. So as a bonus action, I reach into uh, uh, this bag of stones that I have, and I'm going to catch. I'm going to cast magic stone okay. on on uh, three rocks that I have. And I am just going to, uh, I, hey buddy, uh, you, uh, I need you to like go, just go as fast as you can. I know that there's gonna be some, some really good Triceratops treats for you on that side. We just gotta run fast, buddy. And I'm gonna smack him on the butt, smack. You give a little smack on the ass to this Triceratops and this beautiful dinosaur gets the message, takes off. Uh, 
you see that the dire wolves and the triceratops both have a similar speed. The triceratops are actually pretty quick. So they're stampeding and charging, the wolves following behind. Basically, as long as you can keep these triceratops on a straight charge, so you're worried about obstacles because they're, you know, the turning speed. This is not like triceratops Tokyo drift. You know, they're not, <laughs> you got to take a sharp angle with these dinosaurs, we're in trouble. Um, so uh, you cast Magic Stone, smack the triceratops, they're taken off. Uh, any bonus actions from you? Uh, Magic Stone was my bonus action. Okay, amazing. Any actions from you? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to keep smacking that booty and make sure that he's going fast. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, Jackson and Min, you guys can order your initiatives however you want. You're acting on the same initiative. What are you feeling? Uh, uh, you want to make good choices or bad choices first? Oh, you know me. All right, let's make bad choices. All right. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, I reach into my pack and I pull out um, a whole chicken. Uh, and I whistle. I do not know how to whistle. Somebody in the audience whistle for me. <laughs> and I hawk the chicken uh, towards the dire wolves. Incredible. Um, go ahead. So first of all, we're not even going to talk about why you just have an uncooked chicken. <laughs> That's assumed. That's great. Um, <laughs> What artificer? You need your tools, you need your wrench, you need your yeah. magic gear, you need a full uncooked chicken. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, go ahead and give me a, is, are, is this sort of a bonus action or are you, is this like you're going to make a, a deception or persuasion check? Uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to use uh, intimidation and I'm going to be like, go get it! Okay. Go, ahead, go! This is an aggressive fetch. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and roll Intimidate for me. I'm going to say it's DC, uh, I'm going to say DC 15, but DC 20 actually gets a couple to peel off. 17. Okay. So you see, honestly, you throw this chicken and the lead dire wolf ha, hum, swallows it. It's not that big, but you see that like it's, it would want more food normally, but the dire wolf just goes, ha, 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 ha. Oh, chicken bones, guys. Chicken bones. <laughs> yeah. Don't ever feed your dog a chicken oh, bone. <laughs> you see, one, one dire wolf is like, I have eaten, but at what cost? <laughs> and <laughs> trots slowly away. Seven dire wolves yeah. remain in pursuit. Um, Seven. Any bonus actions from men? Um, yeah, I would like to use an eye for detail um, and make a perception check. Uh, scan the area. I know where that we're headed towards uh, the... Uh, uh, you're headed, yes, you're headed for a place within Castle Hallowstar known as Roof's Ridge. Um, can we get to Roof's Ridge? Can we see it in the distance? Are there any beams or uh, obstacles in our way? Can we, like, throw a fruit cart Yeah, behind? give me perception. <laughs> it's just going to be a DC 10 for you. If you give me perception or investigation, okay. DC 10 finds the way. Let me know if you get really high. That's a 10 on the die, but uh, also could also be a 12. Okay. We love a 12. Um, uh, you look out through the sunlit corridor, and uh, I think, Jackson, mm -hmm. you see the central keep. Yeah. And Min, you can point it out, because Jackson has told you to look out for this. Across the courtyard, there is a small, <laughs> nothing in the castle is small. There's an enormous garden. Past the garden, you see the central keep. It's possible for you to take the long way going through the different hallways of the castle, which is populated by the Cloudcatcher family, the noble house of Cloudcatcher, the cloud giant family that occupies Castle Hollowstar. The fastest way to get there is to cut through the courtyard. You stand the most risk of being seen there, but it's gonna get you there way faster and, and more directly than going through the castle. Uh, so that's what you get on that information. Do you communicate that to your party members? Absolutely. Courtyard's the fastest. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 smack. Uh, Jackson, that is your turn. <laughs> Man, I like that idea. Will you hold this? And he hands you a rope that's attached to his waist. <laughs> he jumps off the Triceratops, mm -hmm. God. charges towards those giant suits of armor, and feels this bellowing rage inside of him as a path of the giant barbarian. When this rage comes out, he grows to large size. Why are you growing to large size? I'm a half-life! I'm very angry! <laughs> and the beauty is, with his half-giant nature, when he's pushing, moving, or carrying something, he counts as one size larger. So he has the strength of a huge creature. 
he grabs a suit of armor and chucks it towards the dog to try and create a blockade. Unbelievable. So, <laughs> Jackson, you know these suits of armor well. Yes. You grew up. They made me clean them. <laughs> I picked the nastiest one. <laughs> You get the na you got the nastiest. You go to this giant suit of armor. You go from your norm your impressive half giant, eight feet tall, uh, combining the rage of the path of the giant barbarian with the natural powerful build feature you have. You are suddenly moving things like a huge sized creature. So this eight foot barbarian grows in size. You reach over, find this suit of armor that you were bullied into cleaning over and over by the nobility, the noble children of the House of Cloudcatcher. Stupid Jared. Um, <laughs> you get behind it, woo, a 20-foot suit of armor. The, you can feel the wind pushing off it as it comes to collapse. And by the way, the massive pole arm that it carries come colliding down. Uh, go ahead and give me um, give me an attack roll uh, for your normal melee weapon, um, and we're gonna see, and I'm gonna roll some dex saves for these dire wolves. Can I do it recklessly? <laughs> if you want to do it recklessly, yes, go for it. Yes! Oh, that's way better. Nice. That is a 22. Oh, <laughs> baby! Um, incredible. Uh, we're gonna go ahead, go ahead and roll 3d10 plus your strength modifier damage. Wow. As this, I mean, you're, it's, an, it's an environmental effect. You're triggering this huge collapse of this suit of armor. 14. Plus your strength mod. Ooh. 19. 19 <laughs> yes. damage. Yes. Um, Does that include my rage bonus? I'll say you're quite angry as you throw the armor down. Yeah, for sure. Let's include it. 22. 22 damage. Yes. yes. Boom. Um, uh, Jackson, you hurl this massive suit of armor of some ancient cloud giant noble from some war of empire in ages long past. Boom! These short kind of curly tailed direwolves like slam into the armor. A couple of them, you hear, and uh, audience, I hate to do it, but I gotta do the noise. Uh, as... I t wow. I told you I was gonna kill that dog. Uh, oh, dang! Uh, you you don't know see? what you came here for. Oh man! Uh, boom! Um, the dire wolves uh, uh, rush back. The four in the front fail their saves and get the most injured by it. But you see, snarling and, and struggling, they move out. But you've bought your allies another round of movement as they now have an obstacle to go around. But I think also with your bonus action, a slack rope is moments away from becoming quite taut. So, well, I thought about this. You had me roll an attack roll, but it wasn't necessarily an attack. So at the end of my turn, my rage ends, and I go back to medium size. <laughs> I'm still small. <laughs> you better hold on tight. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna need a strength <laughs> saving throw from Min. Oh, man. You got this. You got this. Please, please don't. Right. Please don't. Well, I'm gonna, don't die. Uh, so I add zero to oh. this. Oh, yep. oh no. Oh. <laughs> That's a nine. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Who are you on your triceratops with? I think, are you with me? Yeah. Okay. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Ellis, I'm going to need a straight saving <laughs> oh. oh, man. Okay. Here we go. Uh, oh, okay, not bad, not bad. Okay. Hey! <laughs> A so, nine! <laughs> so, Cornel Cornelius... These are done already. <laughs> Cornelius and Snorri, um, you are each on your own Triceratops, because the two little halfling twins were able to be with Jackson on one together. <laughs> um, so, so both of you are riding. You see the middle Triceratops. Uh, Jackson, you know, gives a, like... Like, don't worry, I'll take care of it. Vanishes. Men with a rope. Suddenly, the rope is just sort of spooling out. And there's a couple of... Bra, 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 and you hear a... Clang! Hooray! As Min and Ellis behind her shoot, shoot off the back of their triceratops. Cornelius 
<laughs> Cornelius, that is your turn. I'm never trying to be clever again. <laughs> Don't let go, please! Oh my god. Oh my goodness. My arms are coming off. No. I, I pat my triceratops and say, my dear boy, please pause for a moment. <laughs> Oh, you are such a good, good boy. <laughs> nice. So sweet. I, I get out an apple and put it into its mouth. <laughs> and I have more where that came from. Huh? But first, my dear friends are in need of assistance. I turn my eyes up to the sky. Oh, stars above. Slow down, these pets. There are so not good like my good boy. <laughs> and I begin twirling my fingers, and stars begin to fall down in the form of icicles in a 20-foot radius sphere on the dire wolves. And any of them that are in a 20-foot radius sphere, as I cast Ice Storm, need to make a dexterity saving throw against a DC of... It's going to be pretty high. 17. Ooh. These pugs are going to die. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> um, five out of seven direwolves fail their saving throw. Nice. So the ones that failed each oh take 22 damage. <laughs> and then the ones who succeeded take 11 damage. And the whole area that was hit by these starry icicles is now difficult terrain until <sighs> my next turn. Unbelievable. Nice. Hand aloft, you could almost swear that the edge of the horizon darkens in the moment of Cornelius's casting. The sun is low in the sky. Time is running out. But the first stars that appear on the horizon in these last minutes or hour of day whoom, come to your aid and ice you see a number of the wolves who have just gotten out of the massive suit of armor. Um, you see ice comes down on them and freeze in place. They're bad. Um, they're bad. They eat people. Um, uh, you see they freeze in place. You see even one like tries to like lick the ice off of it and its tongue touches the now ice cold suit of armor. Ah! Uh, <laughs> frozen in place. And the others, covered in ice and snow, trudge slowly out of the difficult terrain. Um, and you will all have a moment to get back on your triceratops without the dire wolves catching up to you. I am so sorry. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> um, uh, three injured but still dangerous snarling dire wolves emerge after you. Snorri, it is your turn. Oh, I, I, I look at Cornelius and I say, brutal dude. Uh, and then I would like to just cover our exit a little bit. Uh, you see a tattoo on my bicep begins to glow. And, uh, oh. and the clouds beneath the city that the whole city are built on begin to billow up, fluff up, as I use my rune cover ability to cast Fog Cloud Ooh. around us and just nice. uh, obscure us a little bit before we book it out of here. Incredible. At the end of your turn, um, the dire wolves act, uh, but they are slow. They can't close distance with you because of that difficult terrain, and now the fog cloud surrounds you. The three of them begin to charge forward, but all of you run up, get back on your triceratops, and book it out into the courtyard. Whew. The fog is bright and illuminated by the late afternoon sun cascading in. You are running through effectively a foggy garden. I'm going to roll for the sentries. I told you that there was a risk of being spotted, but that oh. fog cloud is an excellent move. On a natural three on the Ooh. die, you see these enormous proud cloud giants. 
their beautiful silken robes, long around them, gold flecked, with tall spears standing on the ramparts of a massive castle, look down as just a little bubble of fog runs across, <laughs> runs across. Toratha, do you behold now that big old bubble of fog? <laughs> Scooting across the, should we, do you want to, I'm not going to blow the horn for that. That could be anybody's fog. <laughs> um, racing through the garden. You, you are, it's this like, it's almost kind of like in, in, it's beautiful and wondrous, but also horrible. There are vines that suddenly erupt out of the ground that just come into your vision at the last moment. So it's like, sort of like you're riding swiftly through this thick, thick fog and suddenly, whoosh, a giant, it'll be whoosh, the bottom of a cornstalk, the bottom of a giant sunflower, and yes, even a row of beanstalks. As you race through and watch these plants with leaves as big as a rowboat, just room holding down over you. Uh, go ahead, we had that successful perception before, but I just want somebody to give me either survival or animal handling to get through the garden without encountering any obstacles or blockades in your path. Mm. <laughs> and anyone can roll for the whole team here. Great, nice. Ooh, uh, that is a 26 for survival. Let's go. Um, uh, your senses alert and aware, you map out the path of the garden as best you can, moving through. As you begin to ride through here, going through the garden, you find also these old mossy stones. I mean, to call them a stone, these are blocks of stone as big as a halfling home. But you see that they are moss covered and snorry as you ride past them. You see underneath the lichen and the moss, images of ancient runes. <sighs> Story, my friend. Look, perhaps this can lead us to the hidden rune. Oh, I'm so stoked. <laughs> it says where the bathroom is. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. Uh, the massive moss-covered boulders that appear to be ruins in an otherwise beautiful castle. Most of the walls of this are either painted or plaster, or the stone is like a beautiful peach-colored sandstone. Cloud giants, for all their splendor and wonder, do appoint their castles beautifully. But you see that this older, deeper stone, moss-covered though it is, almost as if this castle was not the first castle on this cloud. <sighs> Moving through the garden as swiftly as possible, knowing that you are still being pursued by creatures with the Ooh. ability to smell and follow you, even if you are unseen, you arrive suddenly at the first stone step. Um, these, these stone steps are probably, you know, two or three feet, so quite large, you know, almost like the size of a halfling body, but normal for, you know, a giant moving up steps. And you hear the noise of banging metal, and you smell a rich smell of stew, and the noises of beings working in a kitchen. Oh, uh, there's one thing I'd want to do right away. Yeah, uh, go for I, it. As we continue traveling, um, I'm, now that we're a little bit out of sight from what was pursuing us, I'm going to cast uh, Pass Without Trace on the group. Ooh! So whatever tracks we leave, hopefully they won't be able to you know, follow us as, as, as easily. I'm going to say, if anyone else in this moment of the fog clinging to the outside of the door wants to take a moment to do any kind of buff or anything else like that, take this moment to do so, and then we're going to go back into initiative as you enter this next place. Unless the, unless the goal is for you to exit combat and try to use that, that last round before the dire wolves close again to hide. So, do any buffing you want to do. Inside the kitchen, you hear these deep, resonant voices speaking. And you can, uh, hearing these deep, resonant voices speak, uh, you see that there is a tender, sort of like, sounds like a kitchen uh, aid being like, Mom, have you heard? Small folk in the castle. 
and you hear another voice say, oh dearie, there's always small folk running around somewhere in the castle. A castle this old, always going to have some small folk somewhere around in a corner, places like that. You know, it, it would be a years long project to try to seal up all the little bric-a-brac and holes and things like that. And you see, she says, I, I'd heard that there had been, been small folk before, that I had heard that the Lady Lycia, that she had seen them, the, the cleric of Diane Castra. And, and you know, her son was rather small too. And you see, she says, we don't like to talk about him, dearie. Terrible what they did to him, casting him off the cloud when they discovered. Better not to think of such things, darling. And you see the two giantesses continue to work within the kitchen. You've ca uh, any buff spells that we've cast in this moment? Uh, I'm going to cast Guidance on Jackson. I'm going to say, hey, look, dude, there's no shame in crying. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let it out. <laughs> hey, 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 Hi. Jackson. Don't listen to them, okay? Just, you're here, you, you got friends. You're not here, you're not, you're not alone anymore, okay? That kid is stupid. That kid is stupid. I can tell by the way he talks. <laughs> I just wanted to say something to make you feel better. <laughs> no, I, 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 um, with this moment, you hear the snuffling of these, of these dire wolves <laughs> trying to find your track through the dirt and soil of the garden. You've cast Pass Without Trace. Um, in this moment, do you wish to charge through the kitchen and rely on the fog cloud, or do you want to rely on this new Pass Without Trace and try to stealth through the kitchen? I think we stealth. Let's stealth. Yeah. I'm down with stealth. Okay. I'd, oh, sorry, yes. yes um, I, I, I do recommend we try to go quietly. And, and Jackson, yes, please please. pay no, no mind. Remember, I have looked into the stars and your future is bright. And should we find your mother, both of us, perhaps we'll find the illumination we seek. They pushed me from the sky and still couldn't get rid of me. We'll find my mother, and then we'll fix them. You got it, buddy. Fix them. You're forced. <clears throat> and, and by fix them, do you mean repairing a wound of some kind? <laughs> I can heal stuff. Hey. We can help. <laughs> I, 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 we'll I am... fix them good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> fix them good. Um, so, um, you all are going to uh, uh, enjoin a group stealth check. Um, also, you see that the three triceratops are just like, yeah, we're part of this too. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> so, but the question is, even with Pass Without Trace, I'm not gonna lie, these dinosaurs are bad at sneaking. Um, so, do you wanna revert them to their figurine form even though, you know, like, or do you wanna keep them in this, in this form right now? Let's, let's revert them. Yes. Let's All right. I, think that's I love them. But idea. Yeah. <laughs> you see the Triceratops really, really take it like a professional. They really, they're dis there's disappointment. They're like, I think we could have snuck, but that's ultimately your call. Um, <laughs> you see, whew, uh, they revert back to their figurine form, these beautiful red, precious stone uh, Triceratops. Uh, and so, group stealth check. All of you are adding plus 10 from yes. Pass Without Trace. Um, we only need the top half of rolls to beat the DC in a group stealth check. You're covering each other's bases here. Nice. Um, Jackson, what did we get? Jackson has spent years of his life traipsing through these halls and everything. That is a 34. 34. Wow. Awesome. Nice. Uh, Ellis, what did we get? Uh, 29. 29. Uh, oh. Min, what do we got here? <laughs> uh, 31. 31! Uh, what do we got here, Sonori? I'm going to go ahead and use my channel divinity to get proficiency in stealth for the moment because I am not great at it. Oh, is that going to help? That's a 3 plus 4 plus 10 is 17. So, mm -hmm. 17, okay. All the help I can uh, get. We, I, I, feel, I feel like this is a great example of something where you connect to Scoreus. The god of the stone giants. God of secrets. Are you there, stone bones? It's me, Snorri. <laughs> S 
stone bones, your divinity, <laughs> reaches out to you and is like, many secrets have been kept in lore, written deep within the stone. Sneaking is kind of not one of those. Uh, <laughs> that's sort of one of those practical knowledge. If you're like looking for hidden lore, I can kind of help with that. But sneaking is sort of a, it's, you got, it's muscle memory, you know? <laughs> Cornelius, you wouldn't believe this. I think my God is telling me to shut up. <laughs> Just be quiet. I, I feel the gods have too many people calling them at once. <laughs> Uh, Cornelius, what do we get for stealth? I, I step forward away from the Triceratops, and you can see as I step with my long robes that I am wearing the softest silk slippers with little stars embroidered on them, and I just slide across the floor in my slippers with a 26. Yay! Nice. Incredible. Um, uh, and... Ellis, what does the magic of your past without trace look like? How does that spell manifest? Uh, so I have a, 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 we have come from our home, from the surface area, uh, seeking knowledge about our grandfather's people that came from the sky. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the, the heirlooms, one of the, one of the keepsakes that I took from home uh, that was his, was a necklace of his uh, that had uh, some kind of rune carvings on them. And I, I just like, t I touch that necklace and I mutter uh, this uh, incantation and this, these kind of vines start to spread and wrap themselves around me. And then everyone else that's near me, it kind of goes into the ground and wraps themselves around their legs and moves up their body. And then it just disappears in this cloud of smoke and everything gets a little bit more quiet and still from that. Small folk have long had to live quietly under the might and power of the mighty. You move forward through space softly, silently, moving underneath massive tables whose legs stretch well above your head. Crouching down under chairs, you hear noises of fire roaring on a massive stove, smell of food. This was a very good room to sneak through. <laughs> the danger you have avoided in being stealthy in this place gets you to the far hallway. You pass by hearing the whispered conversation of the giantesses in the kitchen. Moving through this space, you now see yourselves in a corridor moving towards a massive stone chamber with ropes tied to iron hooks leading to massive chandeliers hanging from enormous wooden rafters, almost like the ribs of a great whale, in a hall made to impress giants with its size. Arriving in this room, Jackson, mm -hmm. you see one of the ropes here and uh, can see the small little latch on the iron hook that you know there is a secret twist to, mm -hmm. to move you up and out of this place. But all of your friends need to hold on to the rope first. Arriving in this place, um, <clears throat> all of you can hear noises and shouting, and you hear a voice of the Sky Lord of Castle Hallowstar, Agathar Cloudcatcher. Your uncle. Moving into this place, time is running out. Uh, but you see the last thing you need to do before secrecy, silence, and the ability to hide. What do you do? All of you need to hold on to that rope. If you hold on to the rope, I'll trigger the mechanism. We have an escape. Okay, okay. but I mean, is it gonna the same thing that happened last time? No, 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 no. <laughs> This is not a rope that I thought of. Okay. <laughs> Define what happened last time. <laughs> well, uh, two, two halflings were slingshot across the floor. Oh, no, yeah, absolutely yeah. that's going to happen. Oh, oh, oh it's okay. the flat. Wait, wh how, okay. what about you? How are you? Are you holding on to the rope too? I'll be fine. <sighs> okay. Like Don't laugh about that. <laughs> <laughs> now, is, is there an option for me to maybe sit in a seat attached to the rope? Where are we going to get a seat from? 
Uh, you know. I know where. Can you make something? Yeah. Okay. My horrible uncle is talking about the tiny folk in the castle <laughs> and he's going to probably try to put us in a soup. So... Okay, so I hear you. You're, you're saying we look, should just... Halfling soup is a delicacy. <gasps> Apparently. Oh, okay. No time for that. I hold on to the rope. <laughs> <laughs> Hold her to the rope. I'm just reminding the, you that you have a D4 from Guidance. <laughs> no judgment, but, you know, just D4 for you. Guidance. To flip a switch? <laughs> Don't say that. You never know. We could have used it last time. Brenna can hear you. Okay. <laughs> um, turning the switch, Good idea. all of you hold on to the rope. And uh, as you turn the switch, you see in the little stone opening behind it a small rune. The same rune you saw on the bottom of that bucket in the halfling village where you met Ellis and Min. The journey rune. The rune of journeying. And a journey begins as the rope, tied not just to a hook but to a hidden pulley, begins to travel upwards, spooling and spooling as you are rushed almost like a bridge of rope holding onto it as it slides up towards the chandelier. And as it arrives at the chandelier, one of the rafters, like the opening of an attic door, folds down, opens like a welcoming landing. You are plopped by the moving rope with the shadow of Ellis's spell still surrounding you and whoom, your eyes adjust to sudden shadow and as they adjust to the new dark environment, you see you are surrounded by crossbows pointed directly at you <laughs> as a guard of halflings trains their crossbows on you and the village of Roof's Ridge made of stolen napkins turned into blankets and houses made of the discarded detritus and refuse of the giant's workings, a village made of scraps and stolen goods, halflings living in the rafters of the castle. <laughs> Turn to you. You see the leader of the group turns out and says, huh. We're the Long Falls. We're from here. If we are. We, we, we're... Well, our grandpa was. We're family, is maybe. This, is this Sheriff Bobbin? You look, and he looks at you and says, Jackson! It's Jackson, my boy! Where, where have you found these? Longfall, did you say? What do you mean, Longfall? Do you know that name? Uh, I don't know the name Longfall. There's no Long... And you see uh, an older woman steps forward. You see she bears... Uh, the markings of a priestess and has a giant rune. Um, there is a coin, a, a golden coin of giants, which around her neck is like a, a flavor flavor clock. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an enormous, nice. enormous Stylish. coin. Sometimes the reference is there and you're like, I'm not going to find anything other than that. Um, <laughs> that's just burned in there. Um, the coin has a, a, a symbol, a giant rune on it. And she steps forward, curly hair made white and silver with age, piled up high, tied around with a beautiful yellow band, yellow robes, and a little staff that you see has the image. It looks like she is wielding a staff that was the uh, magical wand of a giant. And she steps forward and says, <clears throat> I... I am Babitha Bobbin. I am the elder of Roof's Ridge. This my brother, Martimaeus. The leader with the crossbow holsters it and just embraces Jackson. Oh, just gives yeah. a big, uh, big hug. He says, he says, I can't believe you're alive. Uh, wait, are you a g g g g ghost? I'm, they... I'm just pale, Martimaeus. <laughs> <laughs> But, but they, those awful, those villains, those evil lords, they threw you from the castle side. Even that couldn't stop me from coming back. Man, that rips. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love, ah, you see, he's like, he, he, he's like punching you in your like upper thigh, which is all he can reach. He's like, that's my guy. That, that's, I, that's when we found him. We're, we're from the, I suppose the surface, I don't know what you would call that, the, the world below. And we, we found Jackson. 
when he fell from the sky, he was he left a giant crater. Okay. You see, you see. These are our smart friends. Oh yeah, hey. Sorry. <laughs> uh, you see that Babitha says, "Oh," and you see she looks at some of your runes and says, "Ah, you seek for it then, the knowledge of those first carvings by the hand of the All Father." Hell yeah. <laughs> You, you are exactly right, Reverend Mother. The uh, two of us are scholars of giant lore and have come here filled with the fire of, of discovery and adventure. Oh, well, you have come at a dire time, my learned friends. For she, who is the high handmaiden herself of the goddess Diane Castra, youngest child of Anam Allfather, goddess of trickery, boldness, cleverness, and Jackson's dear mother. Do you know what has befallen her? They trapped her somewhere. They went looking for her when they pushed me off. Um, a beautiful young uh, halfling woman, looks like a ranger. She has like a leather helmet. She has like leather armor with these kind of like canvas flaps under the arm. And you see she has like a little sort of short bow over her shoulder, steps up, and she goes, uh, I know where she's being kept. I've seen her in my reports. I'm, I'm the leader of the squirrel rangers. Um, <laughs> okay, one more. The what? The, Say huh? that again? The, the what rangers? The what rangers? I'm, I'm serious, okay? I'm very, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm very serious. So I am, I'm Captain Emmeline Thimble, and I'm the leader of the, squirrels are bigger here than they are on the ground, okay? <laughs> it's impressive to ride a squirrel. They're not easy to train. Squirrels oh. under the best of circumstances don't really, stop cooing. It's, <laughs> I am a fearsome warrior. I have tamed the squirrels. Stop it! It's stop, it's. I, I want to. Wait, wait, wait! Look, and like we like pull up our shirts. We've got. Oh, yes. We like squirrels too. I reluctantly pull up my shirt. Um, <laughs> you see, uh, you see that uh, they look at you, and, and Babitha touches this shared birthmark. That when you guys stand shoulder to shoulder, you have a birthmark that across both your backs creates an acorn. <laughs> and you see, Babitha says, it's true, you are descended of Roof's Ridge. And you see, Emmeline goes, don't let the squirrels see that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I go to Babitha. Yeah. Uh, our, our grandfather, we, we believed our grandfather came from perhaps this place and, and we've come We've come back. We've come looking for where our grandfather comes from to find a part of us that we felt has been missing. We don't know anything about the people that... I'm sorry, we just... We... We're always kind of a little bigger than everybody else down on the ground. Um, you? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a full three feet. <gasps> right. You see... You see Babitha... Uh, takes your hand, Ellis, and you can see all of the halflings here so small in this space. They are of this realm of giants, and you are not bigger than them, like all of the halflings that came through your town and saw your father, and you look around and see faces, and within them, they look like your grandfather. Ugh. Ellis got picked on a lot growing up. You did too. You just handle it a lot better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, the town, all, you know, the weapons long since lowered. It's a dangerous world up here. The whole town crowds in around you and just surrounds Min and Ellis. And there is a big, warm embrace as this whole village of halflings comes together. It's all right, my child. Go home. And We're home. She smiles and says, uh, you see, Martimaeus actually speaks up and says, I can only imagine being there on the ground 
Legends of castles in the sky. Giants, tall as the stars in all their finery. And when you're small folk on the ground, it's so easy to wave a hand and say, a tall tale indeed. Mm. Bigger fish still. And make out that these miracles we know have happened really did exist. <laughs> but now you've seen it and know it to be true. And Babitha gives you a little kiss on the cheek with, and puts an old sort of weathered hand on your face and says, acorns fall a long way to reach the stars again. Mm. I take her hand and I, uh, I give her a, a, a kiss. I've always believed the stories. Never once did I think they were too tall of tales. Your heart has borne you here, my dear friends. You see, she smiles, says, home again, and you know the truth of the story. The name Longfall is unfamiliar, but you must know that it's... I imagine they probably got it when they got to the ground. Oh, that is a long fall. <laughs> um, yes. Our oh. grandfather's name was, uh, I mean, Jack? I don't know. <laughs> you see, it says, your grandfather mm -hmm. was Jack. Yeah. I knew him. You when did? I, I knew him when I was, of course, the birthmark. Your, uh, Jack Rafter. You see that everyone in the village turns to look at Jack's son. <laughs> um. Did you know our grandfather? <laughs> uh, men. Why, why did my mother call me Little Acorn? <laughs> um, uh, Jackson, I know, I promise, I'm a very old woman, I'm happily married. <laughs> Can you pop your shirt off real quick? <laughs> I mean, I... Right. Oh, oh, oh. He, like, pulls the sleeves down, rippling muscles, because we know how it works. <laughs> and he turns his back to show it. Of an identical size but able to fit on a single half giant's back is a acorn birthmark identical to the one that spreads across Min and Ellis's back. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you see, uh, you see that, uh, uh, although sort of wiping a happy <laughs> tear away, you see Martimaeus goes, um, well, well, you've met your Uncle Jackson. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Uh, your, your, did your grandfather, no, he wouldn't have known. Your grandfather, b before he was Longfall, and he must have changed his name because the giants would have chased him. He, he had stolen their runes and their magic. Your grandfather was a trickster and a rogue, a thief <laughs> and a liar, and I mean that in the most positive way possible. <laughs> and he... We knew him as Jack Rafter, and uh, he, we have laws in Roof's Ridge not to reveal ourselves to the giants. Anytime we do, we're endangering our lives if they knew we were here, our whole way of life. But Jack was a bold soul. He was everything Diane Castro says to be, clever and cunning and bold and brave, and, and he got one look of the Lady Lycia, most fair of the cloud giants. Don't go there so, right so away. we're all wondering. <laughs> no, 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 hey, no, 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 hey, no. Hey, hey, look. Actually, yes, yes, yes. Look, all I'm gonna say, all I'm gonna say, all I'm gonna say, enlarge, reduce. <laughs> I'm not so gonna look at you. Is this true? Well, 
I can say, yes, there are many texts about exactly this kind of pairing. If you you measure this and <laughs> whoa, 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 we're talking about my mom. Hold on. I'm just here to learn about runes. This you, is. <laughs> you see, um, wow. Uh, you see that uh, uh, yeah, Babitha says, listen. Of the many gifts of the gods, none is so great as love. And the love shared between Jack and the Lady Lycia was as, as brave and bold as Jack himself, and as beautiful and enormous as the Lady Lycia. <laughs> nice. And, you know, love... <laughs> I don't know, they seemed happy. <laughs> But it was only for a short time. You must know. I, I do not... I, they shared some beautiful time together and were very in love. But when it was discovered, it, the, the price was a, a tremendous one. And, and Jack had to flee. And we begged him to come back. But he knew that unless they saw him escaping, that they would look for others like him. He banished himself to the ground to save Roof's Ridge. And he was a bold man and true, but I don't, he could not have known that in the short time that their love blossomed, that already the miracle of your birth was on its way. He's still alive. He is, he's... Not doing well. He's not. I have siblings. Well, I suppose our dad. Mm -hmm. uh, that means you're our uncle. That, that means our grandma needs rescuing. We need to get your mom. You see, uh, Captain Emmeline says, some of our strongest and bravest squirrels are at the ready. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to, I'm gonna set a ground rule. I need everyone here to, to look me in the eye and say, it is an honor to ride a squirrel. <laughs> and you can't laugh or smile while you do it. Oh, no. Captain, let's get fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> um, incredible. Um, uh, Babitha, once again, is the, the, the assembled villagers of Roof's Ridge welcome all of you. Babitha walks over to Cornelius and Snorri um, and says, um, The Lady Lycia is kept high in the tall, tallest tower. It is, uh, by, by small folk measurements, nearly a, a quarter of a mile above the base of the earth. These giants, everything, it's, I mean, it's a little too big, you know? It's, she's up in the tallest tower there. They have kept her, she is still a noble. So I do not believe that she is, is um, I do not believe they have harmed her, but her refusal to, to there have been messages delivered to the castle recently. Are you familiar with a Professor Antoine Leclerc? Oh no. No. He's not here, is he? He has sent missives that he is on his way. Part of her imprisonment is she refused to share her knowledge of the hidden runes and of the, the there are secrets kept within the castle that the Lord Agatha was made aware of by this scholar of the ground, of the small folk. I, I believe uh, he is a, a Furbolg archivist, a professor uh, and scholar who uh, is on his way here right now. She gets very quiet and leans in and says, I have studied what I can, but of the knowledge of the castle, we must be very careful about how bold or daring we can be. So the greater secrets have often been kept from our sight. The message we saw from Professor Leclerc mentioned something of a hidden rune. Oh my goodness. Uh, we gotta get up. Yes. What, what is this? What could it mean? Everything. <laughs> you have no idea. I've been studying runes for like so long, right? Like, 
it becomes this whole alphabet of like spells and cool, powerful stuff. But the hidden rune, that's like the, that's the omega. You know what I mean? That's like, oh. it, it, It's the key. It's the capstone of the runic system. And no one must give it to that awful villain, Professor Leclerc. That dude fully sucks. <laughs> I understand. He, well, he, he will, rival or? Bad vibes. Oh, he, he will fool you with his furbolg fuzziness, and you will want to give him a hug, but don't do it. <gasps> oh. He's very cute. Is it because you don't have a degree? <laughs> hey, hey. Hey, I, I know you're having a rough day. Okay. I, There's no need for that. I, I, I have a degree in astrology. And life. You see, uh, you see that Sabbath looks and says, I similarly have a degree. A degree of leniency for how much time we spend talking about this. <laughs> Ooh. Is it a high you see, she says, this, this, so hidden, <laughs> this hidden rune. Uh, Professor Leclerc, and I agree, I saw a, a portrait of him among some of the, the Lord Agathar's belongings, and he looked so fuzzy with his little, ooh, little cow like snoot, but apparently he is nasty evil. Like a bad cat. It gets you every time, the every, fuzziness. Every yes. Time. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. I have um, a feeling, did you, did you fall for it once? Is that why you're so adamant about whoa. this? Oh. I will neither confirm nor deny <laughs> that, <laughs> that yes, I may or may not have difficult. first met Professor Leclerc uh, while I was tromping around in the woods in a beast form. <laughs> <laughs> no. you, uh, you see that... Don't think too much about <laughs> it. <laughs> You see, you see that uh, nearby, you s hear the sudden noise of, uh, it, imagine this with a lot more bass in it. <laughs> like a meaty, a meaty little rodent squeak. And um, you, uh, you look over and see these pudgy, fuzzy, enormous little uh, not, not little, enormous sugar glider type squirrels. Oh, let's go! Oh. They are saddled up. You see there's a number of little like holsters. There's some like little stealth smoke grenades and things on the side of the saddle. Wow. Um, and you see Captain Emmeline stands in front of you and says, okay, I was not joking. We're gonna go down the line, right in the eyes. It is an honor to ride one of your squirrels. Is there anyone with like foam in its mouth? You, you want a rabid squirrel? Yeah. <laughs> she says, you see, she says, I'm gonna pretend you didn't imply that we would not take excellent care of our squirrels. <laughs> they are all at peak physical condition. And if they aren't, then we would be uh, treating, to, treating to their injuries, absolutely. I acknowledge the thing that you said. <laughs> he wants a squirrel that can rage. <laughs> I'll take it. You see, she goes here. Oh, it is absolutely an honor. I, I, uh... An honor to do what? To be a squirrel rider alongside you. I don't know that we're there yet, but yes. I, I have a very bad short-term memory. <laughs> you see, she looks at men. And you can't smile. I honestly and I respect. Pass out. I pass out. <laughs> I fully pass, fully pass out. out. <laughs> she looks over here. Oh, uh, Snorri is shaking the hand way too vigorously. Oh, it is such an honor to ride one of these noble steeds. Thank you so much. All right, I'll take that. The stars have shone upon me in blessing, <laughs> allowing me to ride these squirrels. <laughs> and then I step forward and kneel down in front of the squirrels. And in Druidic, I say, my companions and I are unworthy of touching your resplendent fur, the, the softness beneath your chin. If only we had acorns worthy of your beauty and your might, we can only offer to you our honor and your, our respect. 
I've heard May that we, one. dear squirrels, <laughs> ride upon you. A, inc- a beautiful gray, a uh, gray riding squirrel with like a cream underbelly and a little tuft of fur, these big cute eyes, uh, walks over to you, goes up on its little pudgy haunches and does this with its front paws, wrinkles its nose, and you see Emily and goes, oh, it's chosen you. <laughs> I, I am at your service. <laughs> uh, incredible. Emmeline gets you all saddled up. One of, the, one of the squirrels has chosen you as its companion. You, are, you see Emmeline says, we'll cover it later. I know that you're all very busy, but we'll have a formal induction into the squirrel riders. Technically, that's all it takes. You're a squirrel rider now. <laughs> oh. um, and you get chosen by a squirrel. Yes. You have to train for years normally for that to happen. Um, and you, uh, you are all saddled up. And I, I just won Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, there you did. You go. Exactly. Uh, you see that uh, Emmeline takes you to an octagonal uh, window that's sort of like a little stone octagon that has a mesh in front of it that you see that there is like a place that they've pulled it out from the side. They make this massive screen open. And the squirrels, there's an overhang of a peaked roof of the Great Hall with just enough of debris hanging from like a little rafter that's had some damage that there's a place to get up onto the top of the arched peaked roof of the main keep. Um, These squirrels take off. And uh, Yes, Min. Um, um, Actually, before we start, I... uh pull out a giant what looks like like a like maybe a lozenge and unwrap it um, and I and I hand it to my squirrel and I say actually actually they're not really related to squirrels this is a bit of a convergent evolution thing and they prefer sugar to nuts didn't you just meet these <laughs> <laughs> I like and I like fuzzy animals you see uh, the squirrel eats it and gets a little sort of sugar rush. And both of you get on these sugar gliders and begin to take off riding on them just like your father must have done or your grandfather must have done here in this village in this time. Um, the squirrels race across the roof. You look out and see the vast courtyard underneath you. You can't see the edge of the cloud anymore because the walls of the castle are still so tall. But on the horizon, you see distant like a painting. They're so far away with so much vapor and mist and cloud in between you. But these tall, spiring purple mountains on the distance. To the west, orange, pink, red, the setting sun. Its bottom is just touched the horizon and you can see all of the colors of the setting sun. And to the east, you see the beginning constellations of the brightest stars, this liminal space between day and night above this castle. And you see the beginnings of the castle once again taking flight. As night is near, made of shimmering starlight magic, sails, only the outline caught in glimmering starlight emerge from the towers, catching not the wind, but the light of the stars themselves, filling with light, and you feel the castle suddenly begin to move once more as the wind starts to race past you. Your squirrels racing over the roof. They arrive at the tallest tower and begin to I'll go up it. Uh, I'm going to need a, uh, an animal handling or survival here because uh, the squirrels, some, one of them just had sugar, and we just want to make sure they're not too <laughs> playful. 17. 17. Amazing. You keep them mostly on track, but they do that, that squirrel thing, you know, on trees where they're like, like I want to be on the other side. <laughs> and they go yeah. and whip around. <laughs> uh, and the squirrels uh, race up the side of the tower. The very top of the tower is a barred window, Mm. but the bars are like four feet apart from each other. (laughs) This is a place to capture giants. So you're just like, oh, some iron columns. Uh, (laughs) Inside, a beautiful canopy bed in the corner 
a small plate about the size of a shield set aside. A beautiful woman seated at a desk writing in a massive tome, a book eight feet long that rests in front of her as she writes, deep blue skin, her hair tied back in a long silk scarf with the signs of giant runes along it, beautiful gown reaching to the floor. You see, she stops writing, turns to the window and goes, my son, um, you're alive. <laughs> Magic M miracles. Um, did you know dad was alive? She drops the pen to the floor, gasps, and she says, then I have not lost both of the loves of my life. And she reefs you up. I'm just gonna hug you a lot, Brandon. Okay, there, there. Reaches you up and she says, I know not who you are, but please, I know that if you are with my son, then you are of true and noble hearts. For I have known none with souls as kind, giving, and yes, Defiant has my son. This is gonna be a culture shock. Those two are smart. These two are your grandkids. What? <laughs> and that's where we're gonna take our intermission. Welcome to the stage, your dungeon master, Brennan Lee Mulligan, and your yeah. players. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They got popcorn in the back! <laughs> Please welcome back to the stage, Gabe Hicks! Yeah, yeah. I realize thanks to you, I have to explain to her those aren't my kids. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Jackson works fast. Um, uh, please welcome back to the stage, Luis Carrazo! Yeah, 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 a little swag of that. Is. Please welcome back to the stage, Eric Ishii! <laughs> oh, please welcome back to the stage, Dale Kingsmill, my popcorn! Did you tell us so good? Yes. Please welcome back to the stage, Jeremy Crawford! <laughs> this tastes good. Mm -hmm. Very cheesy. Oh, Him. <clears throat> We need as much fuel as we can get. <clears throat> Giants! Uh, One of those. We return to the top of the tallest tower in Castle Hallowstar, sailing on the first winds of starlight cascading from the heavens above. Our brave heroes find themselves standing on the writing desk of the Lady Lycia Cloudcatcher, who now embraces her son, a mighty warrior who still fits in her lap as though he were a child. Oh. Oh. Uh, <laughs> a perilous quest awaits. Now, I know that I have only...
just moments before discovered that not only is my child, who I thought had been thrown to his death, still alive, but that also my love, with whom I created this child, is also still alive. I don't like this anymore. <laughs> I would have done a 20-minute scene there. I know. Um, <laughs> uh, she says, my God, Jack, your, your grandfather. So wait, I'm your grandmother? I mean, yes. So wait, J Jackson. It, it, I mean, not, not, not no, they no, look, no, not technically. Oh, you haven't been gone that long. You know what I'm saying? Where are they? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. They, they are not mine. Oh, right. We, so, oh yeah, Jack. Yeah, he met other people. That's fine. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey. Uh, mom, mom, mom. I heard he's not doing so well. Well, oh, mm, mm, complicated, complicated. Wait, wait, uh, complicated take feelings. Take your time, take your time. Yeah, no, um, we don't, but we have not the time to process. Lady well, Alicia, I, okay, I, she says, she says, love me? She, what's that? Never mind. Did you say, did he love you? It, it's complicated. It's complicated, it's complicated. <laughs> you see, she says, we, I, I your, your father mm. was a, Beautiful, brilliant, clever, small rap scallion, and uh, and I and I fell deeply in love with him for the three and a half weeks that that was going on. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, you, just I, I listen. Three. You're an adult man. You're a b blessedly alive. My son is alive. Your dad was, you know, hey, we, I don't know if it would have worked out if he'd stayed. Uh, but the important thing is, you know, families are complicated. I, listen, listen. We can talk about your dad later. I am the high handmaiden of the goddess Diane Castra. Let's talk about that. That's a little bit cleaner. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea how to help with this. <laughs> the important thing is this. You have traveled long and far to be here. Agathar, my brother, has yes. imprisoned me in this tower, and he is gone, uh, he is retreated to a depth of evil. He, he is awake all night, I see lights on in the main keep. He begs Memnor for power to, to restore an empire of cloud giants over all the lands of this place, and he is searching ever for the hidden rune the last of the alphabet, of the Allfather. You're making a face like you know what's up. <laughs> well, I just, I mean, like, I'm, I'm really excited to meet you, first of all, hey. Uh, I, I really want to talk about this hidden rune, but we did hear really quick just before that um, there might be a guy coming. His name's Leclerc, he sucks. Let's not talk too much about him. Let's do it. No, but he wants the rune. <laughs> she looks at you, she looks at you, Cornelius, and says, let's not talk about him in a complicated kind of way. Uh, let's not talk about him. As, as, as you said, families are complicated. Families are complicated. <laughs> families are complicated. <laughs> I mean, I've been imprisoned by my brother. Families are complicated. The important thing is this. We are running out of time. And here you all hear the noise. Through the wind moving outside, you hear something that sounds a little bit stranger still, a humming uh, of a crystalline magic. And an approaching ship moves through the sky, tall sails of the same magic that moves the castle itself. Our academics Cornelius and Snorri immediately recognize it as the vulture, the ship of Professor Antoine Leclerc. Oh, no, you don't. 
The ship, uh, you can see, races towards the side. From this tallest tower, you can see the edges of the cloud outside of the walls of the castle. There is a dock there made for different vessels, other cloud castles, and indeed, in this case, a sky ship approaching rapidly that you see docks at the edge there as uh, soldiers, uh, high, mercenaries hired by the hidden rune begin to disembark from the ship. Uh, you also see klaxons, or you hear klaxons and alarms down from the castle, and you can see down in the courtyard, fully sort of armed and armored, the Lord Agathar. This proud, tall, beautiful cloud giant, wispy vapor hair, bright blue eyes, marching through the courtyard, bellowing out, good, get Leclerc here now, we'll find them. I can smell it. My nephew has returned to the castle. Um, you I, see... You smell good to me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my nephew. Uh, don't be, don't be weird. Don't be weird. Don't be weird. Uncle don't Jacks. Oh. Um, Lysia like looks to all of you and says, "I am a servant of the goddess Diane Castra. Uh, a, a shrine is kept for her here." And you see that she points to a smaller cloud that you see trails behind the castle as it flies, connected by a rope bridge. On it is built another stone shrine, so it's almost like these clouds that have the magical ability to hold structures. There is a one that was like not large enough to even build a home on, but was solid enough that they wanted to build something on it, and there's a small, beautiful shrine to Diane Castro there. But you see that the rope bridge is like poorly maintained, and that a dull stained sheet, you know, as wide as a ship, a giant sheet, has just been thrown over the statue of Diane Castra in an act of heresy uh, by the Lord Agathar, a follower of Memnor. That's not cool. Outrageous. <laughs> you see, the Lady Alyssa looks at you and says, Hallowstar was not the first castle of giants built on this space. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> we, we saw the rooms we saw, we saw from the original it. castle. And then it got gentrified. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, she says, I want to argue with that, but I'm literally gentry. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think I can. Um, you see, she, uh, she looks at you and says, the knowledge of the hidden rune is deep within this castle somewhere. Um, but there is, I, I have long been searching for it. I have my notes, my scholarly collections here. I know that the secret is here. And she begins to page through her books. And anyone who wants to, as she pages through it, can give me, this would be either religion or uh, an arcana check. Oh, take your oh, pick. Oh, oh. Great, great lady. Yes. Might my friend and I gaze upon that gloriously massive book? Um, you see, she says, yes, absolutely. My um, Jack, when I knew him, wished to read the books as well. And we actually have a whole uh, system for this. And you see that she gets this enormous, like, to her, it's this smaller thing, but it's just a small little dowel, a little wooden dowel that has a little bit of wax on the end, and you can use it like a gondolier uses a pole <laughs> to touch one page and flip it over and we'll pull the little... We'll do it together. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> pushing the pages <laughs> over. <laughs> um, go ahead and give me those skill checks, anyone who wants to. Well, my, my, my friend, mm -hmm. how about we confer? Uh, I would love to. Oh, yes, I will assist you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I really appreciate it. <laughs> I'm going to roll these in here. This has the thing, right? Ha! What's the highest Ooh. one? Is Ninth. That? Okay, so that's 31. Arcana. Whoa! Yes! Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We are always better as a team. Mm. Absolutely. <laughs> you look... Giving that help action, you, Snorri, you begin to move through the beautiful 
note-taking of the Lady Lycia. And you're watching these runes, some of which are like three or four feet across in this book. It's a gorgeous illumination Beautiful. of this text. The Lady Lycia giving this sort of running account of her time and studies here in the castle. You look out and you begin to see a curve. There's, there's, a, there's a rune, in some of the aspects of the hidden rune that she's found, there's only pieces, bits of it, incomplete carvings, elements, findings, looking to see if there's something she could have missed. You look out the window and you begin to notice the old moss-covered walls. One curves in a line near the edge of the garden. Another drops down, straight, <laughs> perpendicular. A single boulder. Yes, yes, I see it. The rune you are looking for, you can see, not in the book, but as you see the fragments in the book, you look at the ruined stone walls. The rune was written in the bones of the old castle. It's the city itself, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you... <laughs> we, we did it, my dude. <laughs> Um, looking down, now, the, so this means that the, that the hidden rune, if it was here before, has been partially destroyed by the new castle. But you see that there are enough fragments in the book that the Lady Lissy was able to find that you're only missing some small component. And you realize, is it possible that some of the moss-covered rocks are the pieces that are missing from the writing within the tome itself? And you know that there's probably just a tiny piece of punctuation missing from the hidden rune. Punctuation. You look out, see the bridge, see the shrine, and underneath the edge of the sheet, you see moss-covered stone. Under that sheet is the last fragment of the hidden rune. Oh my God, okay. Wow. This this is incredible. Okay, uh, bad news. If Leclerc gets his hands on the on the hidden rune, uh, he could use it to rule the world. Okay, what? total bummer. <laughs> but good news, we found it. Yes. And <laughs> we will be the first to discover. Is it a period, a colon, <laughs> an exclamation mark, a semicolon? Oh my no. goodness, a huh. semicolon. You see, yeah, Lady Alicia sort of strokes her chin and says, perhaps an exclamation mark. Maybe Anam Allfather didn't want us to think he was mad at us. <laughs> and so just well, included an exclamation mark. I think it was probably a period because if there were too many of the exclamation marks, they might think he's manic or something. Oh, yeah. honestly, Anam Allfather was very old, so it might have just been a random ellipsis. <laughs> Like, why are you putting so many ellipses in your messages to us, All Father? It's the worst. It's the worst. I'm always like, what else are you waiting to say? Uh, you see, I'm serious. You see, the Lady Lycia says, says, well, if that is the ship of the clerk, then we have no time at all. I, I, I am bound here. There, there is a spell of of there is a spell of agreement. If I, I have my magic with me, but I cannot cast it here, or great harm shall befall me. So there is no way for me to escape from this place. My my spell casting has been limited. Um, but if you must choose between freeing me or stopping Leclerc, you must stop Leclerc. And, and great lady, do you know if this warding affects the magic of others? No, not to my knowledge. It was a curse placed specifically on me in this tower. Well, let, let me try. I'll try something very simple. Mm -hmm. And I twiddle my fingers and cast druid craft and cause there to be a wispy squirrel made out of mist. <laughs> um, a tiny little squirrel appears in the palm of your hand made of 
first starlight and then suddenly wreathed in cute little fur and goes, a friend always to the squirrels. <laughs> Till the day I die. <laughs> Uh, Lady Alicia goes, oh, it's so cute. Um, so, uh, you see that you were able to cast magic in this room without harmful effect. Cool. Well, that's good news for us. About how far out does the ship look, if we can see it from this distance? You can see a squadron of approaching mercenaries with uh, the professor. He can't make out the expression on his face, he's too far away, but they're approaching one of the gates of the castle. It looks like there's going to be a meeting with the Lord Agathar, the cloud giant lord, uh, that might have both of them distracted for just a short period of time, but after that, they're going to be working together, and you've effectively doubled the number of enemies that are searching for you within the castle. Ooh. How, how thick would you say the walls of this tower are? I mean, enormously thick, probably like 8 to 12 feet thick. Well, that won't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I could fly myself and potentially one of you with me over to the shrine, but I worry about the rest of us. I think, as you said, we all work better as a team. Absolutely. We have to find mm. a way over there. Mm. Mm. <sighs> Can we get down through the window, scale down? Uh, you could probably scale down. The issue is that the Lady Lycia, you see that there's a massive uh, sort of ironclad door. There is just a lock in that door, but you see that the Lady Lycia can't do any magic about it. So she, and she's too big to get through the bars of the window. If she were, uh, if she were, you know, she's size huge. You all got through because you're medium or smaller. Well, can we use the squirrels? The ne sugar glider squirrels to glide towards yeah. the ships? Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah, if you want to yes. abandon your mom. We're trying to get... Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, I might be able to do something. Mm -hmm. Can oh, I... stars, please shine upon this place and shatter the curse here. And I cast Dispel Magic. Amazing. Oh. Here yes, we go. Yes, yes. Here we go. Okay, go ahead and give me your check for Dispel Magic. All right. So, this is going to be... I believe you were adding your Wisdom modifier here. 16. You raise your hands aloft. You see that... Uh, let me double check one thing. Hold on one second. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Uh, amazing. You raise your hands aloft, the starlight shines. For a moment, the light surrounds you. It is beautiful and soft, and then even the gentleness of starlight becomes blinding. Woo! And you hear into the tone of a ringing bell, and you see the lady, Lycia, goes, wreathes her hand in mist, and says, my darling Cornelius. No. And looks at you here and says, I feel almost as though I had known you in another life. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <gasps> this, this is what I hoped for. You see, when I, when I was reborn, I awoke with this starry map and Diane Castra, her symbol is upon it. She... And it, it told me I have some connection to either her or maybe even you. She holds the map and goes, well, Cornelius, let's ask her. And uh, she, says, she says, your squirrels can fly? And you see, or says, more or less? More or less? More or less. And she says, well, I can fly, what? definitely. Oh. And she leaps at the bars, gaseous form, whoom, and turns oh. into a cloud, appears outside, hovering above the castle. Um, wow. That's my mom. <laughs> um, uh, and you can see, as the twilight descends and it becomes darker and darker, she stays high, trying to get farther away from anyone that can spot her, no light around her, and looks to you and goes, the shrine, 
Let us go. Let's Once. go. Um, she takes off yep. flying, her massive gown trailing behind her. Uh, these squirrels all look. I'm going to need, uh, just give me an animal handling to get these squirrels to know that they need to jump. Oh. oh. I will say, oh, oh, wait, wait. The stars bless you. And I use one of my omens, and you may now add a d6 to your roll. Ooh. Yeah! Oh. Doing Cornelius, I will say, I was keeping everyone else safe. <laughs> Mom's scary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did we get for our animal handling? Oh, wait, is it just a, a group one? Oh, no, no. Uh, Individually? Uh, 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 this can be a... I got an eight. You got an eight? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's go ahead and make it a group check. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a, a plus, oh yeah, 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 this one. Oh yeah, okay, so that is 15 plus Ooh. seven, 22. 22. I'm gonna use my other channel divinity to do the same thing and get proficiency <laughs> in animal handling. Let's do it. Nice. Oh, that's good. That's um, 27. 27. Nice. 22, 27. What do we I get here? 10. 23, Ten. powered up by the squirrel. Yes. yes. A group of, we got everything we need. So behind this, there is a beautiful, the, the, the glory, the majesty, the might of giants. Her hair, mist and vapor. Her gown, scintillating gold and silk. A giant sorceress. And then five squirrels with saddles. Don't look. Don't look. Keep, keep going. Just don't. Just don't. Oh, okay. Five saddled don't. flying squirrels uh, take off into the sky. All of you saddled with little, boom, the flaps of their little fuzzy wings. Yeah. <sighs> um, take off. And all of you, on, those, on that incredibly high animal handling, the squirrels get enough altitude that you're not going to land in the courtyard. You actually make it all the way to the bridge itself, and able, or you are able to slide right in for a landing across the rope bridge. You are in the shrine. Lycia is here with you, whips the sheet off, and you see um, that there is a beautiful stone statue of the goddess Diane Castra. The, the sort of sneering, taunting youths and nobles of the castle have defaced the statue. There are marks of paint and blood, of refuse, of, of, of the, having like thrown uh, uh, like vegetables and, and you know, uh, uh, midden and things like that have been thrown at it. You see that she bears a stern countenance, and your mother, Lycia, regards it, puts a hand to it, and begins to press digitate and clean the statue and clean the shrine and make it whole once more. Um, she kneels, and you see that the base of the statue is a massive block of this moss-covered granite, and you see its shape, this swirling, beautiful knot of intersecting, curving lines, the last piece of punctuation. And you hear in your heart, Snorri, the warm sigh of pride of your divinity. A great secret. You have wrested from the stone, my child. Um, Diane Castro says, I need some moments to reconsecrate this space that I might call to answer the question of your map and of this rune herein. And just give me a moment to, and you hear from way far away, a moment you do not have. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You oh. see, in a little sort of explorer's cap, clad in like high muddy boots, a sort of buttoned up vest, and with a saber at his side and a tome, his bovine ears twitching malevolently, <laughs> Professor Antoine Leclerc. You're too late, Antoine. <laughs> I pointed him and I said, you didn't even leave a note. <laughs> oh. 
He looks at you and says, ha, 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 ha. No, I did not leave a note because there was nothing left to say. Oh. We are going to finish this story today. <laughs> you see, he says, that you are right. Girls, seize them, arrest them, keep their notes especially, find the secrets of the rune, and then remit them to the custody of Lord Agathar. And striding from the shadows, a massive cloud giant noble points to you and says, Oh, Jackson, mm -hmm. you got back up again. You won't. <sighs> He says, very well, it'll be a privilege to have you and the little creatures that have been running around in our castle gone for good. All you know is privilege. You talk and you talk. You're a giant. Act! Uh, I think at this moment, you are all, the rage is already coming into let's your butt. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Everybody, roll initiative. Yeah! Woo! Here we go. All right. Uh, let's go ahead. Let me know what nice. you got. Uh, Cornelius, what do we got? 10. Cornelius with a 10. Snorri, what do we got? 17. Uh, Snorri with a 17. Uh, what do we got, Min? 12. What do we got, Ellis? 11. What do we got, Jackson? 15. 15, here we go. Um, uh, you see before you that there is this massive rope bridge. Now this rope bridge is terrifying. The gaps between the planks are five feet across from each other that just open into endless sky and the indigo landscape of the sleeping countryside miles below. You see that the rope hangs to either side and these mercenaries begin to run across. Now, a five foot gap for most people is easy to just use the move and to leap. It doesn't even require an athletics check, but it's just extremely dangerous if anything happens to move you off of position. Now, uh, we are also going to jump in. Um, we are also gonna jump in here now and we'll take our initiative uh, for our enemies as well. Uh, Snorri, you are first to act. Okay, uh, the first thing I'm going to do as a bonus action, I'm going to summon my spiritual weapon, which of course looks like an eight-legged horse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to, is, it, how close is the nearest batty? Um, uh, along the rope bridge. So your enemies, I think, spend a moment charging forward. They are now about 80 feet away from you, away from the shrine. Okay, great. Uh, well, I would like to summon my spiritual horse weapon uh, 60 feet along that bridge towards them. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, just stroll a little, little bit closer. And as a cantrip costing one action, I'm going to uh, target Leclerc with a sacred flame. Amazing. Go ahead and give me your attack roll and give me the attack for the spiritual weapon as well. Thank you so much. I need to... Oh, God. Oh, this is so many dice. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> spiritual weapon, that's uh, uh, 16 plus 7 is a number. 16 plus 7 hits. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm really good at maths. <laughs> uh, sacred flame, unfortunately, is like an 11. <laughs> Uh, Sacred Flame is only so Sacred, so Sacred Flame does not hit, but go ahead and give me the damage for spiritual weapons. Certainly. Oh, eight on the D8 uh, plus five. So another number. Another 11. Um, or eight plus what? Five. 13. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, amazing. Uh, so, uh, Snorri, you raise up your hand, the flame of the giant god of secrets, boom, into your hand. You hurl it, uh, it flashes across, and you see Leclerc, gah, as the, it hits him. Parallel tricks will not save you here. Um, and he sneers in response to the attack. Lord Agathar charges. Oh. Uh, he is 80 feet away right now, so he is gonna charge 40 with his movement, and 
uh, he is then going to actually cast a spell. Um, I am going to need, uh, I'm gonna need a strength check from Jackson. Easy. Uh, and you are looking to beat. No! You know what? Oof. It's charity. That's a net one. Gotcha. Um, I said that your rage had already started. That's advantage. Let's do it. Ah! Nice. You got it. That's better. There it is. Uh, that is extremely handy because Agathar casts telekinesis and goes to fling you 30 feet off the edge to once again fall oh, to the ground below. No. Uh, describe what happens instead this time. As he tries to push Jackson back, Jackson grows inside, digs his feet down, and one of the best parts about being a raging giant barbarian is after you've gotten used to it, after you've gained this strength, you experience an elemental affinity. This elemental cleaver, as he pulls his blade from his back and digs it into the ground, the blade itself becomes enveloped in flame. And this rage isn't angry, it's disappointed. <sighs> hey, Jackson, it's your turn. Well, the beauty with Elemental Cleaver is I'm gonna get to add an extra 1d6 to my damage. Ooh. The beauty with the Path of Giant Barbarian is also I get rage damage with a ranged attack. Yeah. <laughs> and because I like being a problem, I did take Sharpshooter. Yes! <laughs> so I'm going to recklessly use Sharpshooter and throw this sword into his chest as hard as I can. Here we wow. go, let's kick it off. That's not great. <laughs> but that is That's way better. That yes. will be a 23. 23 hits. Nice. So that is 9 plus Roll a d6 for me. Oh, oh no, no. You roll it. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Another 5, so 9 plus 5 14 plus 10 24. Uh, and the, what, the weapon you were throwing is what? This is your the, elemental cleaver? The bloodshed greatsword that is doing 24 points of fire damage. Fire damage! Uh, whoo, fire rips across the sky, illuminating the rope bridge, and thuds into the chest of Agathar, dealing 24 points of damage. Uh, he bellows in rage. Uh, uh, and goes, and you see he burns his own hand, grasping the blade, trying to stop it from sinking further into his chest. Can I tell you a beautiful thing about this? I would love you to. With Elemental Cleaver, if you throw the weapon, it reappears in your hand the instant after it hits or misses the target. Oh. And I call it right back. <laughs> yes. You I've got a second attack. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's go. So let's go ahead. That's, <laughs> that's a net one. <laughs> but so it comes back. Yeah. It goes fast. It goes far. And Recklessly? I, you only get that on your first one. Is that, that no? Is well, then let's do it again. I'm looking at the dude right now. It's no, yeah, for sure. Roll I promise again. you. Roll again. <laughs> that's a 10. <laughs> you rolled another nat one? No, no. I rolled okay. a 15. Oh, no, 15. Okay, 15, 15. Great. And we love that, and that's great. Yes. Hey, but, there's, but wait, there's more. Okay. I might have missed with my sword, uh -huh. but I look at my nephew. Will you do me a favor? Whatever you need. Will you stab him in the face? With pleasure. <laughs> Incredible. So the last thing that I will do then... Sorry, did you get a 15 on your second attack? No, it was a 10. Oh, it was a 10. Sharpshooter. Oh, sharpshooter. Oh, sharpshooter. Yeah, no, I... Uh, that's why I you gotta be careful. Um, I live dangerously. No, <laughs> see, I wasn't worried about that one because my last favorite thing is a thing called Mighty Impale. As a bonus action while raging, you can choose one medium or smaller creature within your reach mm -hmm. and move it to an unoccupied space you can see within a certain amount, like 30 feet of yourself. <laughs> so I'm gonna take my nephew 
<laughs> and I'm gonna fastball special him towards the top. Mm. Unbelievable. Um, uh, so we are going to end your turn with Ellis Longfall Rafter um, rocketing through the air. And due to the, uh, the wondrous, beautiful abstraction of initiative, we're going to end your turn with Ellis. Yes! <laughs> and you will continue your collision course for Agathar on the beginning of your turn. Beautiful. Um, uh, unbelievable. Um, okay. Still 80 feet away, uh, the mercenaries charge forward. These like heavily armored, uh, uh, sort of humanoid guards of Professor Leclerc. You see that a lot of them are like have like different runes or scars on them of like giant lore and rune crafting. These are all the sort of soldiers of like the hidden rune. Um, they are going to surge forward and use an action and a double action to move underneath the sort of screaming bolt of Ellis yes, right. and are about 20 feet away from you. Good. There's about four of these mercenaries. Good. Um, we're going to move from there. Uh, uh, that's the mercenaries. Min, that is you. Uh, two. Oh, sorry. Okay. No, Snorri, Snorri went at the top okay. of the initiative. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, <laughs> okay, I uh, use a bonus action to dash and I, uh, how, can, how far can I get? Oh, yes. Uh, use a bonus action to dash. What's your speed? Uh, God, but in relation to giants. Um, a bunch uh, of the 25, mer- 25. A bunch of the mercenaries are 20 feet away from you and Jackson. So you're oh. good to go. You can close rank with them right now. Okay. Um, Agathar is about 40 feet away. So you could get there with a bonus and a dash if you wanted all, to. All bonus dash to Hell him. Hell yeah. Um, and I'm going to pull out... Um, I have a giant's needle as a, that I use as a rapier. Um, I'm going to, uh, I draw it and I slash at his, uh, his ankles. Let's go. Give me your attack roll. I love my knee finesse. Mm-hmm. Ooh, uh, now you got it. 16. 16 hits. Let's yes. go. go. All right. Mm. Uh, three plus sneak. Our halfling friend bolts through. Uh, I'm going to say that you race forward through the feet of the mercenaries now charging on the bridge. Take your sewing needle out, (laughs) ducking in between them, close in with Agatha. How much damage do you do? Uh, 21, and I go, that's my brother! (laughs) So (laughs) so there's a very funny thing of you fastball specialing, and you will look down, Alice, and see your sister just running normally. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I, I'm still mid-air, right? Yeah, I think yes. there's a moment. Well, in the, in, the, in the way the round is going, it's like the moment where you're curling up around Jackson's mm-hmm. fist. Min is already <laughs> just like heading yes. off. Um, you do 21 points of damage, uh, and you've used your bonus action, so that's your turn. Yes. Uh, um, also, uh, and as I slide under, I do, the, I do the knee slide, slash with my rapier, and then out of my pack uh, drops like a very large, it's... it's dark metal uh, and it's on it, it, and it glides across the floor at a very slow rate. It is uh, a steel defender in it, but it is shaped like a little, a, a little Roomba. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's like a I love that. Uh, and it acts directly after me. A little artificer's disc, um, you know, for gi- this like giant size, and razor sharp little the little spinny guy at the front of Roomba's. He's got a little he he's got a little like a like a little knife taped to him. <laughs> This is one spicy Roomba. I, I'm um, an artificer. And so he uses a uh, melee weapon attack plus six to hit. Uh, ooh, that's a 14. Hey, giants <laughs> present a lot of surface area. Yes. A 14 is a hit. Yes. Let's go. Uh, uh, Eleven. Eleven points 11 of damage. Of force damage. Of force damage? Yes. It's a powerful Roomba. Um, <laughs> bam, bam, bam. This artificer's device leaps into life. And uh, hey, let's keep it in the family. Ellis, you are up next. Okay. Listen, I am, mid, I am in midair. Yes. And seeing 
my, now that I've learned my uncle, who is the smallest amongst his people, seeing the bravery and the courage that he has facing off, uh, facing against this, this giant, this uncle that's coming for us, it emboldens me. And I am gonna, uh, in midair, I have a bandolier of darts. Yeah. I'm going to pull these darts out. First bonus action, I'm casting Hunter's Mark on the giant, on his uncle. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Uh, and so uh, I'm taking some attacks with these darts as I start flinging them at him. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna do a thing. Yeah, do it. So, uh, well, you roll the hit first. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so first attack is, uh, oh, wow. Uh, I'm sure that hits. That is a 29 to hit. Oh, that'll uh, do it. Yeah, for sure. Okay. That'll get, good. That'll get done. So, uh, you see this after image of a, a much larger version of me mm -hmm. throwing this after image of this dart, almost as if it's a giant halfling made of stone, but like as if it's a memory mm -hmm. or a dream. Uh, I'm activating Stone Strike and Colossus Slayer. Stone Strike is one of the abilities that are new in this, uh, uh, in this uh, expansion. So Stone Strike is going to, um, I'm gonna roll damage. I got a lot of dice to roll, but they, that, uh, Sometimes he's gonna say to scary it. stuff, you know? How many dice do you have to roll, you know? Uh, I got one D4, two D6, and one D8 that I'm gonna roll Woo! right now. But he's going to have to do a strength save, DC 14. Otherwise, he gets pushed 10 feet. And 10 I'm trying feet. to push him off this thing. Off this thing. Hell yeah. Um, incredible. Um, go ahead and roll damage, and what's the save and he needs to as, make? As he's doing that, as his hits, I have uh, flavored my Strike of the Giants Cloud Strike as a twin thing, where we do a, like, set him up, uh, distract him, and as my melee attack hits, my brother swings into action, I give him uh, Strike of the Giants Cloud Strike, which he gets uh, 1d4 thunder damage, which is just one, one extra thunder damage, and then has to make a wisdom saving throw, or I become invisible to it. Oh, wow. Ooh. So I roll this oh d4 too? Oh my god, y'all are scary. Hell yeah. Little folks yeah. with big punch. Uh, so that's, ooh, that oh was an gosh. eight, that was an yeah, eight, yeah. Uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 23 points of damage. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Uh, 23 points uh -huh. of damage to Agathar. Yes. Uh, from the darts. So, boom, this image of stone, bam. Now, there's a couple effects happening here, right? Yes. What does he need to save against? Uh, he, for me, strength save DC 14, or he's pushed 10 feet. Strength save DC 14. It's probably I mean, it's strong. Wisdom save 14, otherwise I'm in, I, he can't see me. Okay, strength save 14. Uh, he succeeds. Boo. 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 Boo to that. Wisdom save, he fails. He does not see you. Nice. Um, uh, you see that, boom, he steadies himself quickly here on the bridge, um, uh, and you are unseen to him. Um, any bonus action was the hunter's mark? Uh, bonus action was hunter's mark. That was just my first attack, so I'm gonna hit him again. Here we uh, go, here we go. Let's go. That is a uh, 19 to hit. 19 hits. Go ahead Great. and roll damage again. Uh, so Hunter's Mark and my dart. So this is going to be, uh, that's four, that's eight, that's 12 more points of damage. Uh, Stone Strike has been used. Colossal Slayer has already been used. And then I'm going to Action Surge. <laughs> Let's go, let's go. I am pulling out from my pocket a stone. One of the ones that I had earlier imbued as a magic stone, but that's no longer there. Yeah. But what I'm now going to use is stone throw. So I am chucking this thing at him, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, let's see if it hits. <laughs> Um, again, you see this after image of uh, uh, almost like a dream, this giant yeah. halfling chucking the stone. That is going to be a 16, uh, 15 to hit. 15 to hit, 15 hits. Ah, uh, okay. So he is going to take, uh, this is 1d10, 
And I gotta yes, say, Agathar has gone from looking mighty, imperial, powerful, to looking badly hurt. <laughs> you see him going, gah, gah, gah. hey, there's other guys on this bridge. <laughs> Uh, that is eight points of force damage, and now he's got to make a DC 15 strength save. Okay. Different DC. Uh, or else he's knocked prone. Or he's knocked prone. Mm -hmm. Look, you said keep it in the family. <laughs> family rolls deep. With a plus eight to his strength, saving, for, to, for the plus eight to his strength, a natural three fails. Whoa! <laughs> Ellis, a halfling who searched for a home in the sky. A stone flung from your hands. Hey, shout out to halflings being good at throwing stones. Uh, erupts from your hand and you lay low, a giant. Boom, he flies back, bam. Hits the rope bridge. Um, is if I I want to check something. If I roll something, does it show up? Do we see it? If it shows up somewhere? No. Will it show up if you roll it? Yeah. It's got to. Oh, it's got to. Oh, for digital stuff, does that does that show up somewhere? It, yeah. Well, or actually, no. Let's do it. We're gonna do it, Erica. I need you to roll it. Great. I want to do that. Erica. All right. Yeah. I need you to roll a saving throw. <laughs> and the reason you throw a saving throw is because I'm an honest dungeon master. And I described this rope bridge as rickety. Trail, yes. Whoa. Yes, yes, so yes. I need you to roll a constitution check for the rope bridge. Oh my gosh. And, if you, I... and the rope bridge adds nothing. It is an old rope bridge, but it's a DC 12. So on, a, on an 11 or lower, our pal is taking a spell. <gasps> Become the rope bridge. That's oh! right! <laughs> so, Ellis, the rock, whoo, bam, hits him in the chest. Whoa, you see the wind, like move, his, his body rip, like cheeks rippling with the force of the stone's impact. Flies back, hits these moss-covered, rotting old planks, and Crash! Boom! Your uncle, who threw you from the castle, begins to fall. I want to I wanna say one thing to him as I see him fall. Yes. Long live the queen. Oh! oh! Uh, Hell I, I yes. have a question. Am I falling too? <laughs> <laughs> so... Only the planks that he hit are broken. So Min is fine. We did establish that you are rocketing through the yes. air. <laughs> and I would have smacked him on, like I would have landed on his face, but since he dropped, then I'm still shooting past so, him. So Ellis, you're kind of like sailing and you're looking at a very scared giant and you're looking. Um, give me a wisdom saving throw. Oh no, okay. Uh, oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I have something, I have something, I have something. <laughs> Inventory. Uh, 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 wait, go back there. Uh, uh, wait for his boots. Wait. I have. Uh, you uh, the boots. I have. Oh, advantage on. No, okay, so. 11. 11. <laughs> so. That's, that's a flavor wisdom saving throw. Basically, you experience the full range of Wiley e. Coyote emotions. <laughs> yes. As you're like, yeah, take that, motherfucker. Why aren't you getting farther away? <laughs> we're we're <laughs> remaining <laughs> equidistant. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, so, Alice, you begin to fall. Um, but uh, as you fall, you're also avoiding. Uh, so now Leclerc is going to go, who goes right before uh, Cornelius. Um, uh, Leclerc raises his tome of giant runes. He raises them aloft. Um, and he is going to cast a lightning bolt uh, to hit both men and Jackson at the same time. I'm going to need dexterity saving throws from both of you. And he's going to upcast this at a sixth level. Oh. 
hell? And and Min. Oh, that's the wrong one. I my my that's, eyes that's twinkle one, and there is a positive omen. You'll be able to roll a d6 and add it to your saving throw. Nice. Oh, thank you. Um, oh, oh, what did we get, I, Jackson, for our dexterity? That's a 14. Um, uh, this is an effect you can see, by the way. That's a 14. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to help. No, I, but but I, I almost like that more because if Jackson is larger, Jackson sees this lightning bolt coming towards his family, he's going to try to tank it, no matter Amazing. How, whatever he can do. Beautiful. Um, uh, so, uh, Min. Um, uh, okay. So, uh, thanks to my Zephyr armor, uh, which is actually new in this one, I am 11, 15. 15. Hold on one second. That is the exact DC. Woo! Amazing. Um, uh, so, and do you have evasion or no? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. So, Min, um, like, running down here with your steel defender, this lightning bolt cascades underneath you, and you swing under one of the planks, whoo, to be under the bridge for the moment the lightning bolt barrels over you, and Jackson, you are hit in the chest for 30 points of lightning damage. Wow. <gasps> I'm a barbarian. I'm chilling. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, our uncle's cool. Um, yeah, LeClerc cool. rushes, th- uh, uh, you see that uh, with a bonus action, LeClerc rushes forward and propels himself over the gap in the planks to arrive about 50 feet away from uh, the party at the front of the shrine. Cornelius, that is your turn. Yes. Oh, no. I thought you were going to be my snuggly bear. <laughs> But now, once I've drained all the moisture out of you, you're just going to be a stuffy. <laughs> oh. And I, I raise my hand up to the stars and call on the very void of space to cast blight upon him. Yes! Oh. Here we go. He all needs, right, uh, what is the make- save required for blight? Constitution saving throw with a DC of 17. Oh. Man, you are a jilted ex. Yeah, Cornelius yes. is scary. I, uh, it is not lost on me the spell selection of a Constitution right. saving throw for a <laughs> primary spellcaster. Ooh, no. Uh, uh, Leclerc is unable. Professor Leclerc is unable to save. Um, go ahead and roll damage. He takes fifty-four necrotic wow. damage. <laughs> Don't think about it too much. I can't believe you are draining all of the moisture from my body. <laughs> I thought this would never happen again. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, whoa! Oh, it took me! It took me five seconds! <laughs> hey, I, oh, sorry. I, uh, you know, you gotta, it's the, you gotta follow the, the game of the scene. Um, <laughs> uh, you see, um, you deal a tremendous amount of damage <laughs> to Leclerc. I'm not going to lie, <laughs> Professor Leclerc has one hit point left. Oh, wow! I normally wouldn't call that stuff out, but I think for, for verisimilitude, you, there's a look that characters only get when they have one hit point left. It's just like, ah, oh, dang, this is one away from as bad as it gets. <laughs> and, and so, and so looking at him in that space, imagining the shelf I'm going to place this new stuffy on. <laughs> wow. I blow him a kiss, and as I do so, I transform into the form of the Archer constellation. And as a bonus action, fire off an arrow of light (laughs) directly at him. So... Who are you? (laughs) That's my question. (laughs) That's true. 
And so, I'm gonna roll this one with a physical die. <laughs> Ooh. Here we go, here we go. Do it over here and you over your hair so you can see. Oh, yeah, if you do it, it there, it goes on camera. All right. <gasps> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Let's roll it. The tray of doom. No! No way! No. no. Really? <laughs> Why did you no. say that? Look, it's hard to get over some of those X's. <laughs> You, I think you blow a kiss. This is a the, the Leclerc, someone who th their brilliance and intellect for a moment brought them into your life. You were captivated by their genius until you learned that they were bending all of their mental might to the ruin and destruction of the world. Someone who wished to use knowledge to crush the world underneath a giant boot, someone whose thirst for learning was only a path to evil. And at the final moment, as you, you see Leclerc goes, wasn't there something that we shared? <laughs> and it's just weird enough. <laughs> A little Sorry. arrow of light. He goes, JK, I'm bad. <laughs> oh. And, and we are going to return back to the top of initiative with Snorri. Oh my God. So much has happened since I was last here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is an unorthodox thing I'm about to suggest. Um, is it possible that Ellis is, uh, is, is flying on a trajectory to falling, but still like above some, some planks that he could land on? I think that if you were aiming for a cloud giant's chest, that you were aiming for about 15 feet above the rope bridge. So I'll say that at the end of your turn, as you're moving laterally continuously, your trajectory is, is dipping just enough to leave you above the plane of the bridge. Cool, because what I'd love to do is I'd like to cast Thunder Wave at you. Um, <laughs> Okay. You gotta get creative, you gotta get you gotta, creative. You gotta, you uh, gotta. I'm gonna book it down the bridge. And basically, Snorri is going to, this is a rude carver background ability, he's gonna rip open his shirt to show the, uh, the storm rune tattooed on his oh. chest. He's gonna blast outwards, and I'm gonna cast Thunder Wave at you. Uh, you have to make a constitution saving throw or be pushed 10 feet, hopefully to ground. Ah, um, okay, am I? <laughs> If I feel like I'm falling and I'm not going to uh, uh, make uh, land on the bridge, mm -hmm. uh, and I s can determine what, what Snorri's trying to do, can I choose to fail? You may always choose to fail a saving throw. You may always choose to fail a saving throw. So, go for it. If you want to, and, and you, yes. I will say, Snorri, depending on your placement, you could either buffet him back onto the main segment of bridge or buffet him castle side, whichever one you want to do. Oh my God, where do you want to be? I want to go where the enemies are. Yeah, great, great, we'll do that, we'll do that then. Uh, you are gonna take some damage, I apologize. That's okay. Ellis, uh, <laughs> You take 12 points of thunder damage. Uh, I'm using, uh, so as the thunder starts to like uh, uh, head towards me, this like wave of thunderous energy, I'm gonna use my reaction to cast Absorb Elements. <gasps> awesome. Mm -hmm. um, you are, your skin for a moment like stone, and you feel the might of giants within you. Your heart is a giant's heart, no matter your size. Um, uh, uh, let me know, um, uh, you land safely. Six, six. Um, Give me also, uh, uh, what are you rolling right now, by the way? Oh, I was just taking, uh, taking uh, the I, damage. I think it gives me resistance, so I have um, six. Taking the damage, go ahead and give me either acrobatics or athletics. Oh. Call it uh, a DC 12. Great. Let's do this. Uh, acrobatics or athletics. It's going to be acrobatics. Oh, 10. 10. So 
you land prone right next to Leclerc. <laughs> Boom. I, is, where, wherever he is, my head just sn- snaps right to him. He looks and says, <laughs> 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 You are an angry little guy. <laughs> <laughs> wait, see, wait, wait. So this, this man just opened up his shirt and thunderclapped like... <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. You see, you see that? Yeah. The lady Lysia looks at you snoring. And ripped. Just so you know. <laughs> just so ripped. ripped. <laughs> She's like, I... I was not aware of some of the things going on in the church of Scoraeus. <laughs> I always thought of stone giants as kind of thoughtful, pensive, sort of... You know, they say rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thunder down under. <laughs> um, uh, Lord Agathar falling. Looks up at uh, Jackson, who has just said, Long live the queen. As he begins to fall, he goes, Not like this. Cloud giants have the innate ability to cast fly. <laughs> <laughs> the lady Lycia has the learned ability to cast silence. Yes! <laughs> With a readied action, seeing that everything is in peril, she leaves her ritual for a moment to cast silence, and I want this to be in front of the board again. So, uh, this is how this is going to work. I'm going to ask you, Erica, to roll Agathar's saving throw for this. Um, The difficulty, and so so everyone will know right ahead of time, uh, uh, is casting... So she's casting it on her brother who is falling to his death. The DC is 17, and and Agathar is rolling a, hold on one second. uh, Oh yeah, Box, yes, yes, yes. Hold on, I'm just looking at this right now. Uh, Any creature object inside the immune center entirely, I'm looking at this, is there no saving throw for this spell? Silence? No, it just sucks. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Learn something new. <laughs> um, well, we were gearing up for a big dramatic role, but <laughs> instead what happens is the Lady Lysia looks at you and says, Queen, my son, I love that. <laughs> and her brother goes, by the power of Mem... <laughs> and falls through the clouds wow. to his death below. Ooh. Incredible. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, Agathar's turn is gone. Jackson, you are surrounded at, by mercenaries charging at you and your mother. There are four mercenaries in front of you. What are you going to do? Man. Uh, where's the weird man that's the ex? <laughs> the weird man! Professor Antoine Leclerc! Uh, he's about 50 feet away from you. I am going to dash okay. towards him. Great. Take any attacks that these... Well, I don't know. If they, if they think that they're smart enough to do this, everybody's got to die someday. So they can make their attacks, and I'm just going to charge past them. Okay. Um, is an 18 to hit. I've rolled an 18, a 19, a 16, and then one misses with a seven. Cool. But um, we're gonna go ahead, roll their damage. Incredible. Um, uh, you are going to take, uh, you take 22 points Whoa. of damage, have, because it is uh, slashing damage. Nice. So, uh, as these mercenaries try to surround you, you move across the bridge, Leclerc is 20 feet, or no, what's your speed? Uh, it is 40. Oh, you're 10 feet away. Oh yeah, great. Um, oh, and I, as a giant, uh, as a Path of the Giant Barbarian, have reach. Ooh! <laughs> And just to add insult to injury, I'm actually as well going to use my reaction of Stone's Endurance to reduce damage that I took by 1d12 plus 3. Hell yeah, go for it. So let's, let's see. So I took 11. Ooh. 8 plus 3 it's is 11. 11. Nice. <laughs> the might 
of giants fills your body. Swords connect with your bare skin and are chipped and warped by the power of your rage. I look at this strange, puny man (laughs) who looked wrong at my nephew. (laughs) And I see the edge. And one thing I love about Mighty Impel is it's not only allied creatures that you can throw. So I need him to make a strength saving throw for me. (laughs) Yes. On a natural 13, he gets a 12. Wow. (laughs) He needed a 17. (laughs) So I pick him up and say, I'm gonna show you something my uncle taught me. And chuck, yes! You, I should have prepared more utility spells. <laughs> you see, both Agathar and Antoine Leclerc vanish through the clouds. Um, uh, surrounded, uh, surrounded by these mercenaries, though you are, Min and Ellis, you see all of them turn. Uh, you are facing the edge. These mercenaries uh, rush and are going to swing on your back that is oh. turned to them, honorless Ooh. as they are. Um, mm-hmm. They are going to, uh, they're going to come for you right now. Uh, one, two, three, four. And actually, yours, no, you have reach. They're going to make athletics checks to try to throw you. Yep. They're going to rush up behind you and try to throw you as well. So I'm going to give you four strength checks to beat. You need to beat a 16, mm-hmm. an 18, mm-hmm. a 14, oh. and another 18. 16, 14, 18. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> I fail every single one. <laughs> you are raging. Are you rolling with advantage? I was not, so let's go. Oh, okay. <laughs> rolling with advantage. Oh. And these are medium sized creatures? Medium sized creatures. I'm large. Oh. Can they throw me? Well, it's all shove attack, so they're just trying oh, to move you well, five feet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Mm. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Oh my. Yes. Okay. Wow. <laughs> With uh, 10 feet from the edge as you are, uh-huh. um, you are pushed to the edge. Uh, question. Yeah. Where's my Roomba? <laughs> <laughs> On the bridge, vacuuming? <laughs> is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how close is it to... This. Uh, uh, so, they, so they've made just enough successes to push him off. Um, uh, but because it's a defender, and if it's within five feet of uh, any, anything, it imposes disadvantage. Okay. Yeah. On the attack roll of one creature, I can see within five feet of it. Okay. Uh, uh, it's, wait, you can impose disadvantage on one creature. On one creature, at least. Okay. The attack roll is against a creature other than the defender. I am gonna take, no, it was just enough successes because they're pushing you five feet each time. So it was just enough successes for them to push you the remaining 10 feet and over the edge. Yeah. So you only need one of them to roll low enough that you are pushed just to the edge and not over. Mm -hmm. Erica. (laughs) Oh no. (laughs) You wanna roll in that tray for me? Do it. Uh, These, oh, so. on a, on a 13 or lower, that will move it. this roll to disadvantage. You got, you got it. Or move the roll to failure. You got it. You got this. Just one or the... Here, here, here. Roll, hmm? roll this, roll this. Just one. Oh, no, just no, because we're already, we're taking yeah, the other yes. roll because you're retro. Okay. I'm being very nice. Four. Yes! Oh! That's a Come in, come in. Oh. Family! Family! This is becoming a, an entry into the Fast and the Furious <laughs> <Man> franchise. <laughs> <laughs> oh because my God. we started out with the tape. I know, right? I know, it's great. Um, so, uh, all right. So you see that one of them, they rush up behind you and say, we'll find the rune. 
say hello to the what? And the little Roomba <laughs> bumps into the guy <laughs> and just takes his eyes off the prize for just long enough. And he's like, I don't even have context for what this device is or could be. Uh, and Min, that's your turn. <laughs> yes. Um, at that, uh, I stand myself squarely on the bridge and I shout to them, you've seen what happened to those who are far more powerful than you when they come up against the family. <laughs> do you dare do the same and intimidate? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. In the background, a, a, a priest is gyrating rhythmically. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say your rhythmic gyrations give advantage on this intimidation roll. Yes. Let's go ahead and roll intimidation in the tray. Erica. Okay. Oh yeah! Woo! That's a 19 plus 12. What? <laughs> oh yeah. You see, standing next to Jackson, who's just hurled their boss into the sky. Ellis, who is just mean mugging from prone. Uh, one of the mercenaries looks at a gyrating scholar, looks at you and this little bumping magical vacuum and just starts crying and goes, whatever it is, we don't want it. We don't want to, I don't know what the wiggling has to do with the threat, but I don't. <laughs> everyone's so, everyone's got so much magic. Uh, honestly, I'm not even sure how we get paid now with the guy being thrown over the thing. We give up, we surrender, we Please surrender. Please see yourselves out. Well, the bridge, uh, the Jump! Bri okay, goodbye! And you see <laughs> They all, you see that all of them jump off the bridge and then you see that, that one of them, they all take out a bunch of potions and they say, we thought it would be relevant to have these and drink flying potions. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know why the boss didn't take one. Seems like a pride thing. Anyway, nice to meet you. Goodbye forever. <laughs> With that, you are victorious. Yes. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yes. A sh it was the wiggling. A shimmer of starlight fills the shrine. The bridge swinging wildly with the energy of combat stills in this moment. The tyrant of Castle Hallowstar is no more and behind you, the statue of Diane Castro gleams with starlight. The Lady Lycia kneels, her hands clasped in prayer. She looks to you, her son, and gestures to her side, smiling. I step there immediately. She looks and says, guests, treasured allies of my son, These are the legends of our people, of the shaping and forming of the world by hands vast enough to hold the mysteries of these great seas and mountains, the forests of our world, hands to touch the sky and feet to tremble the earth. But these stories of ours, these legends, reverberate through all of our world. The sky is not any one tyrant's. It is the thing all of us share together. Come, you are welcome here, heroes. And you see the statue alights. And as it does so, the mountains in the distance, enormous and yet so small, stars overhead. In indigo night, a figure, stars gleam, a face 
turns. A woman stands, her feet on the earth, standing in wide plains between forests. The mountains barely reach her knees. Her tall hair bound with ancient gold, inscribed with the runes of giants at the dawn of time. It rests among the stars. She turns to regard you some hundreds of miles away. Her hand moves through the sky, becoming realer with each passing moment as her handmaiden prays at the shrine. Her hand moves through the sky and beautiful trails of mist, like the passing of swift flight, move behind her fingers, creating new clouds as she welcomes you to the knowledge of this last rune. The voice of the goddess Diane Castra reverberates and you see that though only those in the shrine can hear it, far below, forests ripple in the wind of her speaking. Well, it seems the rune has long been found. This is merely the beginning of another great adventure. And that's all for us here. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. Give it up for our amazing cast of player characters. Give it up for yourselves. Thanks for coming out. Give it up for our wonderful dungeon master. Have a wonderful rest of your convention. We'll see you out there. Thank you so much for coming. Goodbye. Bye, Jack.